All right, good morning. We're back up here with my little buddy Fritz this morning. And he had off yesterday. Give him a little chance to soak on the good times we had towards the end of the week there. Brought him out this morning. A little bit spry, a little bit hard to catch, but he finally came around. And we got him caught, brought him over here, saddled him up. There's no issues there with the saddling this morning. So that's a good thing. And this morning, I'm not going to start out by riding him. We're going to give him some lessons on desensitizing today. And uh, see if we can get him a little bit more confident with things that are going on around him and not so reactive to different stimulus. I uh, brought out my bag full of tricks that's over there by the round pen. If we get through everything good then I might put a little bit of a ride on him today but the main focus today is going to be it's going to be on defense tightening. So, be something different for you guys to watch today. All I did was stick my hand down here by the cinch. You just never know. And that's why we're working on desensitizing today. Because he just kind of seems to sort that when things aren't exactly to his liking when it comes to something happening around him he has a tendency to overreact to it so we're going to see if we can maybe correct a little bit of that today and get him a little bit more steady about dealing with things. See, he's already kind of looking sideways at all this, all of my toys over here in the corner. So, before we start on that, I'm going to do a little groundwork here with him. Make sure that he's listening to me and paying attention. Because the object of this desensitizing is not to get them more scared, but it's to build up their confidence in you to be able to keep them out of trouble and help them figure out that they don't have to blast off into space when something different happens to them like he did over there just now for not really any reason in my opinion other than me touching the cinch which he knows I'm going to be doing when we get saddled up but yet he still chooses to lose his mind once in a while. Yesterday we had kind of a run and gun battle going on Facebook 
for something that I said that was mistook out of context about different disciplines in riding and different styles of riding or different training methods. And they took it as an affront to the whole particular community that jumped in on my comments. And just want to make things clear that I don't normally talk in politically correct terms when it comes to the general public, especially on media. I pretty much tell it like it is based on what I'm dealing with at the time and my observations. It doesn't necessarily mean that I am that I'm uh, disparaging an entire horsemanship community. I'm disparaging a particular instance of training or a particular style of training that I have observed more regularly than perhaps something else that might be a little bit better. There's a lot of good trainers in all the different communities out there but there's also a lot of bad ones too. And in this area I have a tendency to see in my area of where I work and what I do, I have a tendency to see the majority of the bad ones, not many of the good ones. So if the good ones are out there, why don't you speak up a little bit too? And, uh, you know, try and dispel some of the common rumors among different communities about what's bad and what's good and what isn't and what is and so on and so forth. Because if all folks do constantly is bicker about what's right and what's wrong and your opinion is the only one that's going to matter and your way is better than my way and I don't recognize the good folks in their communities and you feel the need to jump on the storm wagon or the shit wagon and continue to badmouth everybody that doesn't necessarily agree with your opinion on what I should be saying or doing, then we're not ever going to see eye to eye on stuff. And not that that's going to bother me all that much because I ain't taking anybody's money for putting these videos up or I don't have any sponsors that I have to answer to and promote their products or or make more profit for them because somebody's watching these videos. We're putting them up for the benefit of the owners to see what their horses are doing and how they're getting along or not getting along. And you guys just get the free benefit of watching them for nothing. The owners are actually paying for these videos. Not directly, but perhaps in the future they might be because it's quite expensive and time consuming to do these videos and put them up there for folks to watch and the owners to watch and up to now we've just included it but it's getting to the point where people start expecting it and when I'm doing this stuff for 10 bucks a day to start with there's not a lot of margin for see that he just pumped himself up there just because he set back on that cinch a little bit. Anyway, I'm off my pulpit now, back to what we're doing. But just keep in mind, If you hold a grudge on what I say, just get over it, because I might be pissing off somebody else the next day and you'll be out of the picture. I uh, saw one of the Facebook deals this morning where they put up a, this is what happened four years ago deal. Facebook puts them up every once in a while and they had a picture of my first book up there. And I, 
I dang near put that up and shared it again and put a little caption on it that said, this is where I, this is where I pissed off pretty much everybody in the horse world with this book because I had some opinions that a whole lot of folks didn't agree with. And that, that's the way it goes. I put it up there because I thought folks that were new to horses and or I wrote the book rather because I, I put I, I wrote the book for folks that are new to horses that haven't been associated with the major entities in the horse world and they're just trying to figure out how to get a good horse and they get corrupted by watching all the movies and all the fantasy stuff on TV and cable and whatnot and they think they can just go out and buy a horse or rescue a horse or or get one from a friend or whatever and everything's going to be hunky-dory in a lot of cases that's not the point that in a lot of cases that's not really what happens they they end up getting in way over their heads because the horse is not right for them and not safe for them for whatever reason whether it's training or attitude or lack of training or too much enthusiasm and not enough slow down, not enough experience with young riders to, and it's a young horse and he doesn't know much and a young owner or an inexperienced owner that doesn't know much and that's why I wrote the book and it it really yanked off quite a lot of people initially but for most of the folks that read it I had pretty positive feedback on it and a lot of new folks that were new to horses and even some older folks have told me that they wish they had read that book before they went out and got their first horse so maybe it did some good for some folks and pissed off a whole lot of others but I don't really care I do what I do anyway we're gonna move on now he's pretty settled we're gonna move on now the first thing I do with my desensitizing is I use this flag and I use it strictly as a noisemaker. And all I want him to do is to get confident in me to be able to keep him out of trouble. I'm not in here to scare the hell out of him with this flag. And I'm going to keep myself between him and this flag to provide that support that he's either lacking or needs in order to keep him out of trouble and all I want him to do is just follow me around here and trust me that I'm not going to hurt him and I'm not going to do something to get him in trouble and all he has to do is control his feet and come along with me and take direction and we'll figure it out together And a lot of times you, you're probably thinking, well, with all the reactionary tendencies that this horse has, why is he so good about this flag and not worrying about it too much? Well, maybe it's because of the presentation. Maybe it's because he's had some of this done in the past. He's a little bit used to it. Maybe he just hasn't decided to trip his trigger yet. When I change hands or do something a little differently, maybe things will change. Like that. But he's doing pretty well. Seems a little more reactionary. A little more reactionary on this left side than he does on the right side. And that's more than likely because he's had more trouble in the episodes on the left side than on the right side. Seems like most of the time when he reacts to something, I'm usually on the right side, or on the left side, rather. So, and it's possible that somebody has used this flag as a tool to get him going, too, rather than what I use it for, which is just a tool to get them to understand that scary things like this are not going to bother them and I'm not going to hurt them with it and they can get confident in what they're doing 
See, he's quite different on that side. Still a little bit reactionary, but not as bad. And as we go along here, I'm just going to ask him to come up a little bit with me. Take an opportunity to get a little bit closer, a little bit more secure, and realize that even though this thing's close, it's not going to hurt him. Pretty good, buddy. How much time we got left? 15 minutes. 15 minutes? All right, we're going to make this one a little bit longer. Now, once he gets pretty comfortable with what we're doing on that on that way of doing it, then I'm going to take myself out of the picture, and I'm going to do the same thing and give him a little bit different position on this thing. And we're going to go back to leading around here a little bit, see if he'll follow me around. Not got afraid of this flag getting a little bit closer. I'm still trying to direct him a little bit on the end of this lead. But you can see he's trying to work his way up here to get a little closer to me rather than actually getting farther away. And that's a pretty good thing. We're going to go start working down the saddle and down down the side. But what I need to do is present this so that he can take a look at it and sniff it and chew it on it a little bit if he wants to before I start working down the side because most all the things that's bothered him has been when somebody's been up close to him and you touch him the wrong way or do something a little bit differently that doesn't quite sit well with him. So it's, and it's kind of hard to say what what all that means. Sometimes horses are just that way. They have a tendency to be a little bit on the fraxis side or get up on the wrong side of the saddle or whatever. Because he has some really good times. Like we had the episode just there just a little bit ago, just because I touched a cinch. And now he's kind of coming along like an old hand that's had this done a hundred times and everything's fine. He's sitting there licking and chewing, he's pretty relaxed. you notice I'm not putting this flag down here where he can't see it though. That's a blind spot and with him I think if I got to working around down here with this flag right now he'd probably get himself a little jacked up and go to striking at it or whatever because he does have a tendency to want to paw once in a while when he's bored. And once I get both sides pretty good and then I start working on the opposite side so he has to kind of pay attention to me and also pay attention to that flag over there on that side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flag, set it out here, and I'm going to draw this flag all the way back across his back, and it's going to wind up out here. So if he does look back there and jump at the thing, it's not going to be there anymore. That scary thing's going to be gone, and he'll learn how to just shut down and relax because there's not anything there continuing to bother him. So we're going to see what happens with that. I got my range short enough here to where I can hopefully pull his head around if he starts to get ornery. That was a real good, real good try. And we'll 
come over here on the other side and see what happens to you. See, you got a little bit tense there when I drug that across the ground. So that's something we're going to work on too here in a little bit, maybe in the next segment. We'll drag some stuff around next to them and see what happens with that. That side was even better yet. All right, that's our first little segment on desensitizing. We're going to break the film there. Then we'll come back and add some more things to this lesson this morning.